Apostle Paul writes to Romans <clears throat> and he says this in chapter 10 verses 14 and 15. How, they, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him who they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. God has put on a mandate on his church, on you and I, to bring the gospel to the world. The narrative or the idea that the world will come to us if the light shines brighter, if we are better Christians, if we get our act together, if we act a certain way that the world will see how great we are, how holy we are, how worthy we are, that that will make him question us and say, wow, what a beautiful family you got. What a good life and put together family you got. What a great career you got. What a great person you are. What's the secret? Now that does happen. The Bible says that our lives is a written letter to this world. And some that, that, the, only, that the only example of Christ they will see. That all has its place and we must live out a Christian life. But Apostle Paul makes us to understand in this place that people cannot believe Jesus unless they hear the gospel. And they can't hear the gospel unless somebody opens their mouth and begins to speak. Jesus calls us to be a great witnesses. He says that you will be witnesses in Samaria, Judea and all around the world. A witness doesn't have to have a perfect life. A witness doesn't have to have everything put together. A witness doesn't have to... Um, have everything in order in order to share what they've seen and what they've heard the witness simply shares the experience and each and one of you in this place you have heard the good news that good news has converted and changed your life it's still working within you the gospel is still working in you and perfecting you and it's moving you forward you're not where you used to be you're not where you you want to be yet but you're not where you used to be the gospel of Jesus Christ has changed you some of you it drastically changed you like we've heard a testimony today the gospel of Jesus transformed her life completely she she could have been dead by now but today she's standing boldly in front of declaring that Jesus Christ has saved her life but it took a preacher to preach a gospel in order for her to hear it to receive it and to be saved I want to challenge you church today that as as a Christian it is it is our responsibility and it is our duty to share the gospel the world doesn't know the truth you know the truth the world is confused the fur the world is in the darkness the world is, is is it's like a blind man leading a blind trying to find their way the world is is trying to see maybe maybe Krishna has some answers maybe Buddha has some answers maybe Islam has some answer maybe new age maybe self-taught books have some answers they don't know the truth you know the truth the truth has been revealed to you and it's up to you to share the truth so that they can believe Apostle Paul <clears throat> says in Romans chapter 1 verses 13 and 14. If you can open it or, and read it or, or there's just be, there'll be a scripture on the back. I want you to know, he's writing to Romans, dear brothers and sisters, that I planned many times to visit you but I was prevented until now. I want to, to, work, I want to work among you and see spiritual fruit. Just as I have just as I have seen amongst uh, uh, other Gentiles for I have great sense of obligation to the people in both civilized world and the rest of the world 
to the educated and uneducated alike. So I am eager to come to you in Rome to preach the good news. That was NLT translation I believe. New King James Version he says this, I am adapter both to Greeks and barbarians, both wise and unwise. So as much as it is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. Apostle Paul uses here a very interesting word. Apostle Paul says, I am in debt to the gospel. I feel indebted to go to you Romans and preach the gospel. In the other translation, the word obligated, he uses word obligated. Apostle Paul is saying, I am obligated to go to Rome. Question arises, Apostle Paul, who persuaded you or who gave you that obligation? You are saved, right? You received Jesus Christ. Your, your, uh, your uh, eternity is secured. You are blessed. You know Jesus. You know the scripture. Good for you, Apostle Paul. Why would you take on such a heavy burden, such a commitment to say that I am in debt, I am obligated to share the gospel with you Romans. I think the reason why Apostle Paul said that is because Apostle Paul understood one thing. The great commission of Jesus was not an option but it was a command. See, when you treat the great commission of Jesus as an option, as in, uh, by the way, as you live your Christian life, mention it to somebody, but only if you like and if you feel comfortable. And if you don't feel like you're going to get rejected. Or, God forbid, you're going to get mocked as a Christian or even thrown into the, lens of the, uh, 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 into the den of lions. Apostle Paul understood the mandate that was on his life. He understood that somebody took a risk to share the gospel with him. Somebody risked his life because understand Apostle Paul, he used to be Saul, he was the one that persecuting Christians. Somebody literally, literally risked their life to share the gospel with Apostle Paul being Saul back then. So that he could hear the truth and he could be saved. And he got saved. So he's Apostle Paul now learning his, his newfound faith, Christian faith. Learning that, uh, that Jesus has died for him. And learning that somebody has risked his life so that his soul, his eternal soul could be secured. He says, I am in debt to God. To the people that share the gospel with me. And to those that don't know the gospel. I am obligated to go out of my way. To share the good news of the gospel with somebody. I, I can't I can't just sit on a bench. I can't just sit at church and, and raise my hand and worship God and forget about a family member that doesn't know Christ and forget about my, my, my co-worker that doesn't know Jesus and struggling in addiction and drugs and, and pain and he's suffering uh, trying to find, a, uh, trying to find a, uh, the truth. I can't just forget about uh, my schoolmates my school, the people that are cutting themselves, people that are depressed, people that they don't know way out, people that, that, that are lost and confused, they're struggling with suicidal tendencies and suicidal thoughts. I am in debt to them. I owe them to release the word of the good news from my mouth because unless I speak to them, they can't hear it. If they can't hear it, they can't believe it. Church, you are sitting here today in this seat because somebody shared the gospel with you. It could have been your mom and your dad they brought to church. But they felt obligated to raise you in the way of righteousness and to introduce to you the gospel. It could have been maybe your friend, your cousin invited you. Your grandma prayed you out. Your co-workers invited you. Whatever the case is, you are here today because somebody took on a mandate and felt obligated, felt called to bring you into the kingdom of God. To share the word of God with you. To share the good news with you. To love on you. To care for you. To bring you 
to church to bring you to the home group. Just to be there with you wherever you're at. I want to tell you today that the gospel rides on your shoulders now. The advancement of the kingdom of God, the advancement of the kingdom of the gospel right now sits on your shoulder and it's your job, it's your responsibility, it's your mandate, it is God's commandment for you to give it to others. You are indebted. It's like, you know this coronavirus is going around, <clears throat> whatever your thoughts about it, it's your opinion. But imagine you, you stumbled upon vaccine and people all around you are dying. Let's say your grandma who's of age and has a lot of underlying conditions and she got it and you know there's chance there's not a good chance that will survive and you come across a vaccine that will save her life you're obligated you are mandated to give it to that person to save their life even if it she was not your relative even if you had no emotional connection and if you had no, no, no emotional attachment. If you have a vaccine for a problem. Then you owe it to them. Owe it to the recipient to share it. And that's why I think Apostle Paul. He chose his words carefully by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He says I have a cure. I have a gospel. I have healing for the sick. I have a restoration of marriage for the broken. I have healing for the family that's fallen apart. I have an answer to the person who is struggling with suicidal tendencies. I have grace that God has given me to release to those who are in prisons. He says, it will be a crime to me to not release it. And the way it's released is through our mouth by sharing the gospel see back to the commandment of Jesus to preach the gospel and make disciples we're on this series of hitting a home run and it's about winning souls and making disciples and we're trying to drive this point and this is just another side to 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 what we've been talking about it see when we all know ten commandments right who, who knows Ten Commandments or at least most of them? Okay, four people, wow. Maybe we should go to the basics. <clears throat> but I trust you, you know the Ten Commandments. See, when we think of Ten Commandments, we understand that they're commandments, they're must do. And I believe most of us here, even though we understand we live under the, uh, we don't live under the law, we live under the grace, the grace cover us, covers us. But I think most of us here, we could say with, with, with straightforward face that I try to do and follow the Ten Commandments, right? Love God with all your heart, do not have idols, honor your mother and father, uh, don't be envious of your neighbors, don't covet, don't lie, don't cheat, don't bear false witness. Most of us here would say that, you know, to the best of my abilities, I am following that. Why? Because it's a commandment. But when it comes to the commission, the great commission of Jesus, oftentimes the reason why we take it so lightly is because there is no word there's not, no, no, no such a thing saying that Jesus said, I command you to preach the gospel. And therefore, because there's no that word command in front of it, oftentimes we feel like it's an option to us as Christians. But it is a command, church. We have to see it as a command. We have to see it as a command because first of all, Jesus said it. Second of all, is because we hold the cure for the dying world most of you here you came to Jesus because you were a low point in your life and somebody brought hope to you somebody brought cure to you somebody brought freedom to you somebody brought deliverance to you somebody brought healing to you and you said you know what I want to follow that Jesus I want to follow that man he died for me I'm going to give my life to him today church the mandate is on you Apostle Paul I believe in Romans as well <clears throat> He writes and he says that as Christians we are part of an army. 
We're soldiers in God's army. And he says that, the, so I haven't been to army or anything of that sort, but having a lot of friends and understanding what they're telling me is that you volunteer there, but then you sign an oath. You, you make an oath to protect the country, protect the flag, protect the citizens, protect the constitution. You, you voluntarily give yourself and you make an oath. You take an obligation. You're not required to. It's volunteer. But you take an obligation and you, you, whether you're in active duty or in reserves, you are ready to do it and serve every time, anytime the country calls upon you. Amen? Right? Okay. So is, we are in a spiritual army. Now, we're, we're not, Jesus is not going to kick us out of the heaven because you didn't share the gospel. But Jesus is calling you. He's calling me. And he's saying, I want you to volunteer and take an oath, take an obligation to preach the gospel. Now that doesn't mean that preaching the gospel is going to be in the same form that I'm doing it right now with the mic on the stage. It might be for some but for most of us it would be in our school, it would be with our workplace, it would be in our college, it would be uh, at your work site, it would be with your company, your business. You if you're intentional, if you like Paul take it as an obligation as, as a, being indebted to the gospel decide that I'm going to be intentional about sharing my, my faith you will find opportunities. Come on. And the thing is, I know that is in the army, if, if you desert it, if you break your oath, there's consequences for it. I, I think same in, in the spiritual realm. When we desert our post as Christians, when we desert our calling as Christians, there are consequences. Now the consequences might not be to you, but the consequences will be that devil will take another soul. Devil will drive somebody else to kill themselves. The consequences is that that family will be lost. That, fam that, that marriage will be destroyed and, 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 and uh, uh, children will be affected by that. The consequences are there. So Jesus is calling us. Now this is not a guilt trip message. This is not a, um, th th this is to motivate us to volunteer ourselves to this great mandate to take on that commission of Jesus and make that this his, the great commission our mission go into the world and make disciples you know um today just just a few examples that I, I can bring to you but all of you here are, are setting example you know uh Bryson came to the church long long time ago Bryson Bryson still he's an intern director right now but he came when he was a very young teenager um, somebody invited somebody invited uh, her uh, his sister and his sister invited him to come to church Bryson he grew up in a Christian family but he was lost he didn't know what he believed in uh, he says that he wasn't saved this is his words and he came here and God touched him the message was spoken and he received Jesus Christ and then he began to develop as a young man growing in God and and and, and uh, bringing others to Christ and just just being developed and today he is a already four years as an intern director we had many people that come through the internship program through a school of ministry uh, teenagers in the summer right now what we have and God has used them to impact hundreds of people literally impact their life for eternity and these people they will go back to the churches they go back into the respective communities and that impact that's made on their life will be lasting effect those people will bring other people to Jesus some of them will go into ministry some of them will bring millions to Jesus and his impact because his sister brought him to church now he's bringing and impacting others you've seen Alexandra here on the stage you know you've been blessed by her you, by, by her vocals you've been blessed by the anointing of God that's on her life she's been leading us into worship for many many years all of us enjoy it but there was a point there was somebody that took a step in, in Pasco High School and came to her and shared the gospel and invited her to church and when she came to church for the first time her life 
she just she said I felt like some little positive good vibes electricity was going through my body I don't know what it was and that and that Wednesday service I believe is still Wednesday services she gave her life to Jesus and today uh, the war literally benefiting from her gifting from her um, talent from the anointing that God has in her life through albums through CDs through YouTube you and I every Sunday service every week are benefiting from it because somebody went out and shared the gospel with her invited her to church there's many Bryson's many Alexander's maybe you and I's that need to hear the gospel and their lives forever will be changed you and I need to pick up the baton and run this race because it was given to us. Let's not drop the ball church. Um, Jesus has done everything on his side. The world is ready. The question is are you ready? Are you willing to do it? Are you ready to go? So here's four pra practical steps that I want you to uh, remember and uh, apply for this next, next three months as we are preparing to do three by three. In the next three months to see three people saved. First thing I believe that we must do is pray for the opportunity to share the gospel. In, in Romans chapter 1 verses 9 10, same story with Apostle Paul trying to get to Romans. He says this, For God is my witness, who I am served with my spirit in the gospel of his son uh, Jesus, that without ceasing I make petitions of you always in my prayers, making a request if by some means now at least I may find a way in the will of God to come to you. He's talking about coming to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. Apostle Paul says, look, I've been hindered. I tried to come, but I was not able to come. He says, so he didn't just, just because the opportunity was not presenting to share the gospel, he said, well, okay, you know, I tried, it didn't work. He says, I am praying for you always. I am praying for you always because Apostle Paul understands this one thing that winning souls and making disciples is not a strategic thing it's a spiritual thing you don't just go out and say I'm gonna save somebody today no you can make a connection with somebody today God can save them through your connection and through you sharing the gospel like 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 Zach shared uh, last week I believe he said we make connection God does the conversion but you have to understand that it starts with prayer anything that doesn't start with prayer it is doomed to fail if we're to answer this mandate and the call of God to reach out to the dying world it has to start with prayer so practically what, what I want you to do is I want you to ask God and I want you to believe and, 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 and be receptive God the three people which three people do you want me to reach out this within this next three months for some it might be more some might be a bit less but at least you get something done begin to ask God Lord which three people it might be your like I said it's your family it could be your family member it could be your co-worker it could be somebody from school but God who do I need to reach out right now and then the names that will pop up write them down <clears throat> write them down reach out to them maybe you haven't talked to them in a while reach out to them make a connection that's my second point put an effort to make a contact I want you to notice what Apostle Paul says this to God be my witness that um, you know it's a uh, first Romans chapter 13 he says I want you to know dear brothers and sisters that I have planned many times to visit you plan to make a connection plan to make a visit pray and get in touch with somebody reach out to somebody touch somebody be there pray and then put an effort to make a contact number three share the gospel share the gospel oftentimes what we can do is oftentimes what happens is we make connections we are friends and we're like well I'm just gonna be friends I don't know I don't feel comfortable pushing my religion on them we're just gonna be friends if they ask me what if I go to church I'll tell them but I, I'm not gonna you know I'm not gonna just kind of push my religion on them the Bible says they're ready to receive it and they can't believe it unless you share it you have to open your mouth to share it you have to talk to them there's many different ways to share it. I'm not saying go around bashing people with Ten Commandments. There's, you know, use wisdom. You, uh, ask Holy Spirit to guide you in the process. Minister to them. 
pray for them but you have to open your mouth and share the good news otherwise people won't get saved so be intentional don't just have relationship for the sake of relationship remember your number one mandate is to preach the gospel and then everything else in, in your life business career friendships relationships everything else revolves around that very issue is saving souls and making disciples and the last thing is expect miracles Baba says Apostle Paul says a little further he's like I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is a power Jesus said when you go and preach the gospel these signs will follow you if you want to see more of God in your life if you want to see miracles in your life share the gospel share the good news and right there right on the spot be bold pray for them pray for the need pray against the depression pray against that migraine headache pray, uh, pray 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 against poverty in their life pray against the spirit that's tormenting them pray for peace of God to fill their uh, heart pray for the sickness that they're battling with and watch God support his word by his spirit with miracle signs and wonders you want to live extraordinary life share the gospel and expect miracles share the gospel pray for people expect miracles so I want you as we're gonna go into worship right now and we're gonna we're gonna connect with God we're gonna go to his throne of grace I want you to ask God if you haven't done so God which three people that you want me to reach out who do you want me to bring hope and healing who do you want me to bring the gospel of the truth and message of, of good news who do you want me to reach out to and you'll see that God will give you people you'll be surprised and they say no that's exactly what I needed you called in the right moment you texted in the right moment wow if it wouldn't be for you I don't know what I would be church it's time for us to answer the call we are indebted to the gospel